look at Photoshop interface. Now Photoshop is much easier if you split it up into its four main areas. These are the toolbar on the left hand side and then directly related to that is the properties bar and then we also have the palettes here and then in the middle in just a moment we're going to have the canvas and that's where all the magic takes place. So we have toolbar for selecting the tools of what we want to do, the properties bar that allows us to select settings within each tool, we have the palettes over here or the windows that allows us to select different things with our design and then we have the actual canvas where all the magic takes place. So let's take a look at the toolbar. The very first tool up here is the move tool and if you just leave your mouse over a tool for just a second or so you'll see that it appears and it tells you the very very useful shortcut. So for move is V so if you press V and that's something you'll be using a lot in the course so try and remember that one. So let's go down, we've got the marquee tool here. Now actually one, two, three, four, five and six are all about selecting stuff. So if we move from eyedropper tool, this is actually used for selecting uh, actual colors. We've got the crop tool, this is for selecting the part of it you want. And if I click and hold, I can see that there's actually more tools hiding underneath. One of my favorite ones is the magic wand. So the magic wand allows you to select uh, certain areas of a web of a design, I suppose, and it has uh, the great way of doing also the quick selection tool, allowing you to select specific areas. The lasso, polygon, and magnetic tools are ones for doing your own selections, so you can actually draw around things, and we'll be looking at that later. Um, another popular one is the marquee tool, and this is for uh, drawing boxes or elliptical ones around specific areas. Something very, very useful, and again, I can use M for this one. So if we just look further down now, we've got the patch tool, and then click and hold, and you may, you may have another one selected. Red eye tool, very useful if you're uh, not a great photographer like me. We've got the brush tool, uh, again, another, something very, very useful, and we'll be looking at how to install more brushes as well. And here we have the clone stamp tool. So if you need to move one thing to another place, I don't know, maybe you want to give someone three eyes or something, you can actually do that. The history brush, not a big one that I use a lot. Um, I tend to use undo. So the history brush does allow you to see all the things that you've done wrong or all the recent things that you've done. Next one, eraser tool. I never use it. Got to be honest, ladies and gentlemen, I never use it because I prefer to use other methods uh, like uh, the layer mask tool so I can just draw things on and draw things out because a razor tool is gone and it's gone forever. So we probably don't want to use that one. Next one is the old gradient and paint bucket tool. So paint bucket allows you to paint one whole color and the gradient is two colors or maybe many depending on the settings you've got. We've got the blur tool next here, um, and sharpen as well. Blur is quite nice if you want to sort of remove things from the background and highlight specific areas of a picture or a photo. Another one here is dodge and burn. So you've got things making it lighter or making things brighter and also darker as well. The pen tool is very, very useful. Um, it's actually better when you use it in Illustrator, but Photoshop does have it as well, and it's for selecting specific shapes and you can draw your own shapes. The dreaded text tool. Why do I say dreaded? Because it is a bit of a pain when you're working in Photoshop, but I'll show you some tricks on how to use it properly. Next one is the direct select and select tool, path select, and these are for selecting things like shapes that you've created. And here's the shape tool itself. So now we've got rectangles, rounded rectangles for buttons and things, uh, ellipse, uh, which is a fancy name for a circle polygon and you can select how many polygons you want, the line tool and the custom shape tool which is one of my favorites. Um, the next one we have here is the hand tool. Now if you just want to practice this, keep your left hand on, on the left hand side of your keyboard, that's it, and then use your thumb and then that is the same one for that. So if you press space it actually does the hand tool and that allows you to move around the canvas. Very useful and we'll be looking at that later. 
And last but not least is the zoom tool, which is Z on your keypad, and that allows you to zoom in and zoom out. Next, we're going to be looking at the color palette just here. So let's take a look at the color picker, which is just down here on the bottom left hand corner. So the color picker has two main areas. It has here, which is a sort of saturation of the color, and then over here is the actual color chooser itself. So if you want to have a blue, you first select the hue, and then select your blue. If you want to have a green, all right, look mean, no. <laughs> if you want to have a green, you just click on here and you can see how the colors are changing. Um, for those of who are web designers, it's this number here that's very, very important later. Uh, and you gradually get to learn these ones. Um, and what they stand for is red. These two here are green and these ones are blue. And we can test that by going 0000, zero, zero, zero FF. And you can see that's a perfect blue. Now, if you do want to select a perfect white, let me show you a tip. So if I clover click over here, I'm trying to select the perfect white, but it's still not all the Fs here, or 255 here, it's not perfect. So to do that, try this for me. Click and hold, and move off way, way, way over there like that, good. And you can see that this is now 255, it's perfect, absolute perfect white. And again, we'll try that for the black. Click and hold, move down, and there we go, perfect black. And normally what you go is whoop, very quickly, like that, and you've got perfect white. Um, so click OK, and then you've got your colors here. The one below is the background, as you can see here. Click OK, and this one is the foreground. Especially useful when you're doing gradients. So for example, I can go from sort of blue to a darker blue, like this. Click OK, and you can see I will use that for my gradient. And we'll use the gradient tool a little bit later. We've done the toolbar and the color bar. Let's take a look at the properties bar. So it would start at the top again, and you can see how as I select the tools, the properties bar changes. So for example, if I've got the move tool selected, the properties bar at the top gives me all the different tools to do with that. Now auto select is a very useful one, but a bit of a pain sometimes, so I recommend having that turned off. What it allows you to do is click on a specific item on the screen and it will select the layer. But if you don't want to keep doing that, turn it off. <laughs> the next one is the marquee tool. All right, so you can select specific areas. And again, here you can see what you're doing, whether you want to subtract and abtract different ones. Um, one of my favorites is text, because here I can change my font. Very easy. And also my size. And also left and right, left and right aligned. And if I want to change the color, I just click here, click OK. So the properties bar is directly related to the toolbar. So just make, spend about five minutes just going through each one of these and just seeing how this changes and what kind of things you can expect on the properties bar. We've had a look at a lot of the user interface and the only thing we have left is the panels over here. Now this is how I like to keep mine, which is having the info panel on the top right and the layers down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reset my workspace and I'd like you to join me as well. So just do reset essentials. Now what that does is puts us all at the same point. Okay, now color, hmm, not really useful because I've got it down here, especially for, for what we'll be doing as web designers. So I'm actually just going to either pull that off or just double click. Adjustments, not really going to use this way because we're going to um, use a different way to get our adjustments layer. Double click. Now here's the most important layer for web designers. It's actual layers. So this is a panel that is an absolute must for your toolbar. So what we're going to do now is add the info. So we're just going to go to window and you can see here all of the different choices. Character and also paragraph is something that we use a lot. But the one that we're going to be using at the moment is info. So we're just going to move here. Click on info. As you can see info is jutting out the side here. Not exactly where we want it. So we're going to move it. We're just going to click and hold and drag it into place just a little bit above there. And you'll notice that a little blue line appears. Let go, and there it is. Perfect. 
Now we need to hide the properties, one click and they're gone. And this is a perfect sort of user interface for a web designer. So the next thing we need to look at is the rulers. Now to do this we just need to do a quick new document. So just do file and new. And it doesn't matter what's here right now, just click OK. Now, to get the rulers we just have to go to view and rulers. But we always know that that's a bit boring. So let's just do command and R or control and R on a PC. Boom. Now you'll see the rulers along the left and the top here and then all we need to do is right click on it and just double check that this says pixels. Now the reason that we do that is whenever you're doing web design you normally work in pixels. When you're doing things like print design then you might use centimeters, millimeters and inches but for us web designers we're pixel perfect. We go, there's an overview of the interface for Photoshop. So remember on the left hand side we've got the old toolbar there and just you have to click and hold and you get to see what's underneath each one of these. As you click you'll see the properties bar change so like I said take a few minutes to have a look through all the different tools. If you want to know what they're called just leave your mouse over for a few seconds and it'll pop up including the shortcut. Now one story for me is that one of my bosses actually did this for me took off the toolbar and then closed it and then I freaked out but the reason he was doing that is to help me learn because as soon as you learn those shortcuts the quicker you'll become to get it back just go to window and tools here so we had a look at the panels on the right hand side and then we went through the uh, windows menu for that and we looked at some of the useful ones things like layers layers and more layers which are really useful for us web designers the adjustments and color we can do elsewhere. Next thing we had a look at was the ruler and we did that with command and R or control and R for your PC users and it was a nice easy way just to right click inside it and select pixels because remember us web designers need a nice workflow and always to be pixel perfect. So I hope you enjoy using Photoshop it'll take you not too long to get used to it but as soon as you do you'll find that all of the other programs become easy as well. So good luck and have a look around.